Hi, my name is Ko and I am with the Institute of Electronics here at Graz University of Technology. Today I want to talk about EMC aware PCB design. So often the outgoing current path is well known, but the current return path is uncertain. So often we think that the current is just flowing into the ground and that's it. But that's not the whole story because the current must find its way back from the ground to the source. So current is flowing in loops every time. Okay, I've tried to sketch our measurement setup for today here. So before we start measuring, I want to discuss all devices which we are using today. So first here, we have our oscillator. So this is that circuit here. So this circuit here will apply a 1 MHz signal to a transmission line. And this transmission line is represented by one of those PCBs here. And we will drive a load here. So that's this device here. And here there is um, a 10 kilo ohm resistor in parallel to a 47 picofarad capacitor. So that's both, both devices here. They are soldered here on the um, SMA connector. Okay, now let's check those devices. So first our oscillator. So we can now see here the corresponding time domain signal produced by our oscillator. So we can see here that's a signal of about 3 volts and so the period time is here 1 microseconds and 1 divided by 1 microseconds is equal to 1 megahertz. Then check out the transmission line. So I want to start to, uh, to analyze that circuit first. So this is a very simple circuit so we will put our oscillator here on that side and to apply a signal here um, on, that, on that trace here. And here we will put on our load and then the current can flow back here on that plane. And first let, let's check out the PCB here. So we should see here this is a transmission line to the middle connection of the SMA connector, so we should obtain a very low impedance, yes, 0.6 ohm, 0.5, but now we have here an open load between um, plus and minus, yes. And if we now plug in here our load, then we should measure the 10 kilo ohms resistance. So let's check that out. So yes, so here we can see 10 kilo ohms. So that's our load here. So the current path goes from here to here and to our load. But how does the current flow back? So if we have our jumper set, the current will just flow here back over this couple plane and back to here. And if the jumper is not set, the current must flow here, downwards here, in that way, and back to the source. And the question now is how we can measure that? So the idea is the ground, ground place is not ideal. So there is um, an impedance here. And over that impedance, um, when a current flows over that impedance, a voltage drop must occur. And this voltage drop um, is now causing a common mode emission. So there is a current driving in common mode and we want to measure that current. And th this can be done with the additional components here. So the blue block here is that device here. So. Um, this is a 150 ohms network and we can prove this blue block here. So let's unplug our network analyzer here and just measure with our multimeter. Oops. 
and now if I will measure from that side I must see 50 ohms to ground so let's see yeah it's 51 ohms so actually here are 51 ohms not 50 ohms and on the other way if I measure it, this block here from that side um, I won't see any anything here because here we have a capacitor which blocks our DC signal so we should measure an overload yes so it has an overload but we can measure a capacitance here so the capacitance should be about 6.8 nanofarads and we are measuring 7 nanofarads so that's great and we have the same device here on the other side and the only difference is that here on that side we are terminating that 150 ohms network by 50 ohms because on this side we are connecting a spectrum analyzer and the internal impedance of that device is also 50 ohms so on the left side and the right side it's symmetrical so we can plug in here our signal analyzer it's basically a spectrum analyzer with numerous fancy additional options but we are not using those options today so we're just interested to using that device as a spectrum analyzer basically we would like to measure the common mode currents as shown in this picture those are flowing in common mode and find the return path via a capacitive coupling typically on the left and on the right side of the circuit there is a cable harness attached which enhances that capacitive coupling. In a car this cable harness typically shows a wave impedance of 150 ohms. Therefore we will place so-called 150 ohm networks between both ground connections. As the outer connection of an SMA connector carries its reference potential we can simply use some clamps to measure that signal. High frequency signals will now see a 120 ohms resistor in series with a 25 ohms resistance of that parallel structure. The sum gives a value of approximately 150 ohms. As measured before, a 51 ohms resistor is used within the blue block because this value is commonly available. Let me now explain you the main idea of this measurement setup. In an ideal case, this measurement wouldn't make any sense since all the current will flow in differential mode, as shown in this picture. So the spectrum analyzer wouldn't give us any response. However, the world isn't ideal and so we have some parasitic elements in our current paths, mainly inductances. When a current is flowing through those parasitics, a voltage drop must occur. Therefore, the ground potential on the left isn't equal to the ground potential on the right. Thus, annoying common mode currents can flow. Now, the current must split up where a very small amount of current will flow through our 150 ohms network. The voltage drop over the spectrum analyzer can now be measured. By dividing by 25 ohms, we can calculate this small current. And then the current is flowing over this metal plate here. So this is a tin plate to be um, exact. And we can measure here. So here we are measuring 1.5 ohms. And now here from that ground to that ground, we are measuring 3.7 3 ohms. So this tin plate here on the bottom should be a low ohmic contact between the ground potential and the reference potential. And here the current comes back and sees here a symmetrical circuit once again, so 50 ohms, so this is this termination here. I hope you can see that on the video. And the current will now split up equally once again here, then comes back here. Here the capacitor wants a DC block, then flows here and comes back here. I would say let's start with the first measurement. So let's take this circuit here and now let's put our oscillator here on it and now the first measurement 
is done here without the jumper here. So, so we will, let's see what we are measuring now. So these are just some current clamps here. And now here, um, let's zoom it a little bit in. So what you can see here now on the spectrum analyzer are the conducted emissions. And just for a short reminder, here on the x-axis you can see the frequency. So we are starting here at 150 kilohertz and stops here at one gigahertz. And on the y-axis we are plotting the current. So the spectrum analyzer is just measuring the voltage drop between its 50 ohms resistance. But as we know the resistance, so both parallel resistance combined is equal to 25 ohms and it's just ohms low we are applying here to get the current out of the voltage. And here we are plotting the conducted emissions and so this result looks, looks terrible. So, but let's consider here this, this scaling here. So 0 dB microampere is equal to 1 microamp and this is this line here. And here on, to on top we can see this is approximately 30 dB microampere. And that's just caused here by the impedances of, of the current return path. And now let's put in here the, jump, the jumper. So first let's save the, the value here. So I can save it here. And it's now the blue line here. And now I will plug in here the jumper and now the, well let's take a look and let's see what happens with the yellow trace. So the blue one is the saved one and the yellow one the new measurement. We can see just by putting in here this jumper, we can decrease here the emissions produced dramatically. dramatically. So the blue one are the old ones and the yellow one here to new measurement. And wh why is that? So why we are measuring here less emissions produced um, just by placing here this simple jumper? So let's clarify that. So let's unplug here our measurement setup. Then I can show you here um, the circuit once again. So here the oscillator is producing its voltage and we'll apply that signal here on the um, ongoing current path, goes here to the load and then it must flow back. And the question now is how does the current return path looks? And now if we have put in here the jumper it's clear. So the current can flow here back over this couple plane here and back here to the oscillator, to the source. But if we unplug here the jumper, the current must flow here in that direction and so back to the source. But now one can ask himself, um, why does that make such a difference? Because if the current flows here, the current flows here, it's um, simply the same, so it's just a little bit more length, so it's maybe 0 0.1 ohms mer more here <laughs> on that direction. But here inductances come into play. So um, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, the current is flowing in loops. And to keep the loop as small as possible, the current wants to flow ideally beneath, he beneath the current path here. So directly under the top trace the current want to flow back. So here I want to show you that not just, just um, the placement of the wires is really important, also um, the placing of wires is important. So here this is a four layer PCB and we are driving our signal source once here a single line without any veer and then one times here where we have 16 veers here. So the current is flowing from the top plane then goes on here on the bottom plane then comes back here on the top plane and so on. And just for educational purposes I have prepared this PCB here 
here, this is the same PCB. So we are plugging in here our, um, um, our oscillator and on the other side, our load. So here on that side. And now um, one can ask himself, okay, what does it make? Does it make any difference? Because um, here the current, the, the ongoing current path looks like that. The current is flowing here. Then here you can see that it's soldered to the red wire here. Then the red wire switches its plane, flows on here, then switches its plane, flows here on, switches its plane, and once again comes here to the load. Then from the load, it's flowing back over that ground plane here. So I would say just start with the measurement and let's see what we can measure. And first, let me delete the previous results, so the blue line. So I'll just delete the blue line here. And then just zoom in a little bit. Okay, we can now see here once again the conducted emissions which are produced by the voltage drop over the VDD and the ground plane. And we're plotting it here just as a reminder here in dB microamps. And let's save that trace here. So now this is here the blue trace here. And now just plug it in here on the other side here. So that cable which does not have any veers. And here now, once again, you can see here, uh, there's a small difference between the yellow and the blue line. And, but you can see there is a difference. So the yellow ones are lower than the blue ones. And so we can see, we can measure less emissions if we are not using VRs instead by using VRs. So to sum up what we've learned today is first, that currents are always flowing in loops and second, that the current wants to take the path of the least impedance. When we was analyzing this PCB here, we have seen that the ongoing current path was well known, so we knew that the current will flow here to the load. But then the re current return path was uncertain. When the jumper was set here, it becomes clear that the current always wants to take the small, the way back with the smallest loop area. And this path is direct, directly beneath the current path. So the current return path is ideally nearby the current path, so the ongoing path. And we've seen that it could result in really um, and a really big difference of emissions measured on the PCB. And second, the second experiment with that plane, with that PCB, showed us that oh, it must not be a big loop. So just by placing some veers, there is a, a, a really a small increase of the loop size and, but this was enough for the current to change from one couple plane to the other couple planes to couple capacitively and which results in small differences what we've measured with the spectrum analyzer. Okay then, that's it. I hope you have liked the short clip about EMC aware PCB design especially to show you the importance of the current return path. I hope you have learned something new, but anyways. Thanks for watching.